um, there. But as a way of introduction, and I, I wanted us to talk about the youth rally that just took place here at the building yesterday. The theme was acceptance. The main verse for their youth rally was found from Romans chapter 15, verse 7. Accept each other just as Christ has accepted you. And I think the theme of the youth rally plays into the message that I was going to share because love is such a key aspect of acceptance. But I want you to understand that the youth rally had five important principles that it was trying to share with our young people. The first being accepting others is a command that we find within Scripture. Number two, accepting others is to treat them with special care. Accepting others is not ignoring their damaging choices. Accepting others is based on how Christ accepted you, how Christ accepted each one of us. And the fifth major point, accepting others is for the purpose of glorifying God. I saw many messages in many who were sharing that yesterday. Today, during this message, we'll focus on one of those key points of being able to accept others, which is love as Christ has loved us. And, and really, if we just went with the song that we just sung, the sermon's over. Um, if we follow that, we're doing what God wants us to do. But there's some thoughts that I want to share with us. In the minds of many, love is simply an emotion. And, and I have up here a couple of cartoons when um, they were first done in the 1970s and growing up um, as I was dating Mrs. Grant. She would get many of these. Um, I had a stack of two or 300 of these that uh, went through and would share in cards. But one, love is lifting the lid on your emotions. Love is sometimes we have to internally look at ourselves and see where we're at. Also, love is an emotional workout. Sometimes more than we ever want it to be as we're serving each other, as we're doing God's word. But in the middle of that, I put the importance that love, as First Peter shares it, is something that we have to do. And we'll, we'll end our message this morning looking at that verse again. Again, love isn't just simply an emotion. Love is a feeling that can't be forced. It's an emotion that can come and go. As some will say, I don't love you anymore. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about long-term love, God's unending love. And we are commanded to love, not just in the sense of active goodwill towards each other, but with the sense of affection and friendship is what God wants us to do for each other. He wants us to be affectionate and in friendship with Him. He wants us to be in relationship with each other, showing affection and friendship with each other. He wants us to do that within the church. He wants us to do that with those that are in the world around us. It is common to distinguish between two different Greek words for love. Um, and there's, there's more than two, but the two we're going to look at today is agape, which we've probably all heard before. And we're going to look at that as the unconditional, the active goodwill that is commanded. And we'll, we'll show, hopefully, during our message that that's commanded by God. And then the other one is phileo, which is kind of a fondness or a friendship. One that can't be forced, but one that we're going to see, I think, in Scripture that we're to have for each other. We're to have it for God and we're to have it for each other. And, they, and we can look at those two words and, and kind of see a distinction between them. Yep, the distinction between them in Scripture is not always clear-cut. 
Because agape can also be defined as brotherly love or affection if we look at Strong's or Thayer's concordances on that. We can also see that phileo is commanded in Scripture. And as we read and have read in 1 Peter chapter 2, 22 and 23, both types of these Greek words are used within that passage. Not that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love, phileo, that fellowship, that deep fondness for each other. Love, agape, active goodwill, unconditional. One another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living, enduring word of God. So let us review at this time how we're commanded to love in God's word. We're commanded by Jesus, by God, if we look at Mark chapter 12, verses 30 and 31. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. We are commanded to love God, and we're commanded to love our neighbors. We are commanded to love or phileo Jesus and family from First Colossians, um, excuse me, um, if anyone does not love the Lord, let that person be accursed. Come, Lord. The Greek word for come, Lord, reproduces the Aramaic phrase or expression, Maranatha, used by early Christians. Come, Lord. The, the idea of wanting relationship, wanting him to come again. We are commanded to love those in our community, which we have read at the end of Mark chapter 12, 31. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no command greater than these. From Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, we are commanded to agape our enemies. That's the word that's used there. But I tell you, Love, agape, your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you. Don't just show fondness for them. Love them deeply. We are called, commanded to love those in our families. From Ephesians chapter 5, um, 25 and, and 28 through 29. Husbands are to love, agape, their wives, which also includes we are to cherish our wives. From Titus chapter 2, verse 4, wives are to love their hun husbands. Um, phileo, a love that is deep, a fondness. Mothers are to love their children. Phileo, them. Be fond of your children. Um, Titus, again, 2 we are to have these types of loves in our relationships and in our families. We are also commanded to have these types of loves with each other in the church. From John chapter 13, verse 34, a new command I give to you, love or agape one another as I have agaped you, so you may love one another. We are to be kindly affectionate. We are to have the love of family towards each other. We are to have this brotherly love with each other. Romans 12.10, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. We are to actively seek a relationship with those in our church. We are to actively do that. And we see that commanded in Scripture. It should be evident that the command to love often requires displaying a true heartfelt, 
affection towards one another, towards Jesus, towards spouses, towards children, towards brethren in Christ. Yes, even towards our enemies. If commanded, then we must be, there must be something we can develop. This must be something that we can develop in our lives if we're lacking. By the grace of God, we can be taught how to love. My next thought on this is, we are taught how to love in Scripture. We're taught how to love by God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9, Now about your love for one another, we do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. If they were taught in the first century, we can be taught together how to love God, to have that brotherly love for each other, to share that affection together. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, this is how God showed his love amongst us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for us. So we are taught by God how to love. We're taught by Jesus how to love in 1 John chapter 3, verse 16, um, because he was willing to die for us. This is how God showed his love amongst us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as atoning sacrifice for our sins. As we read that, I think about, and we talked about this during the youth rally, in, in our breakout group, the, the boys, have we shared the love of God with others? Are we willing to share that gospel message with others? Jesus loved both agape and phileo, his disciples. In John chapter 11, verse 3 and following, it, it talks about his love for Lazarus, his love for Mary, his love for Martha. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, the sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. The apostles, those living, saw Jesus' love in action. And in John 13, it was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. We have a gospel. We have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that show us the love of Jesus. We have that same love of Jesus in this family. And I hope you think about fellow brothers and sisters in the family of Christ that have shown the same love and example to us. But we go on. Paul also shared with us how Christians are to walk in love. From Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children and walk in love as the Messiah also loved us and gave himself for us, a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. That's what Jesus was. That's what Jesus wants us to be, a fragrant offering to him. Again, if we look in Ephesians, Paul taught husbands how to love their wives in Ephesians 5. Paul, who practiced agape in Philippians chapter 4, verse 1, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. We're taught by God, we're taught by Jesus, we're taught by Paul, and yes, we're even taught by Peter, as we've read in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. And here Peter uses both of these terms. 
Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love, that again, fondness, that phileo love for each other, agape each other deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. We are taught to love, agape love, the brotherhood and the brethren within that church. And the brethren means the women, the children, all who are in our church. From 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17, show proper respect for everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God, honor the emperor. Titus chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Older women are taught and are shown as capable of teaching the other women, younger women. So if you consider yourself in the category of an older woman, you are called to teach the younger women in this congregation how to love. And I would say that you're taught to teach us men how to love too, by your example. I know that is something that that I wouldn't have known that type of love without people like Catherine Albright serving at Camp Hunt when I first met them in the kitchen, and so many others that have served. Noelle Golden is another one that, that showed me how to love from her service in the kitchen, and there's so many others. While I was at camp and, and serving at camp, the English family taught me how to love in ways that I hadn't known and how we reach out to each other. We need to be willing to love other Christians, even when it's not comfortable. So, from 1 Timothy chapter 4, oh, if you thought you were young and left out, you're not. For young Christians can set an example of how to love. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. I want to let you know yesterday, I saw a lot of this happening in our building with the young people that were here. There was a lot of love being shown to each other, a lot of love being shown to the adult chaperones. The care that was there was amazing, and it's wonderful to see, to know that it's well and alive. It's not just enough to talk about love, it's important to know that we can develop this heartfelt affection if we don't feel like we have it or haven't seen it in the families that we've grown up with. I shared some examples of how I was shown this idea of heartfelt affection or love. I think the idea of showing a fondness for somebody is enhanced when we add that agape love to it, that unconditional love. From 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities... Mutual affection, uh, qual qualities in increasing measure. They will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Displaying active good will, good agape towards each other, and heartfelt affection, phileo, will help us to follow together. From 1 Thessalonians 4.9, Now about your love for one another. We do not need to write to you, for yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. Let us be known as people, and known as a church, it is known for the love that we show each other. 
So as we get to our conclusion and we think about that, we cannot excuse the lack of heartfelt love towards Jesus or our brethren or our families. We can't excuse it by trying to make a distinction between agape and phileo. They both have to be there in our relationships with each other. For both kinds of loves are commanded, and the two often overlap in our lives. So don't think just because I'm doing something loving towards somebody, it's enough. We've got to agape them in our relationships. Where we lack a heartfelt love towards Jesus, our brethren, or our families, we need to acknowledge these deficiencies. And by acknowledging them, that's acknowledging our spiritual immaturity so that we can grow. We need to be willing to relearn love, whether it be agape or phileo, if we're lacking in those areas. We need to learn to love others with this heartfelt love. How do we do that? We look to the examples of God our Father. We look to the examples of Jesus. We look to the examples of the apostles. We look to the examples of other Christians that we know in our lives that are doing that. And then we must take the initiative to practice this love, this phileo love, this agape love, to develop deeply within the relationships of all people. We have been purified to have affection for one another. Do we agape one another fervently? I want to conclude by reading 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 22 through 25. Not that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, Love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the loving and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that we see preached to us in God's word.